We dismiss history at our peril. Liberty Nation Radio with Mark Angelides. Hello and welcome to another edition of Liberty Nation Radio, heard coast to coast on the Radio America Network from our flagship station in the nation's capital, WWRC. I'm your host, Mark Angelides. On today's action-packed show, we are talking palace intrigues and power struggles in Iran. The International Criminal Court comes from Bibi Netanyahu. How household wealth is being impacted by the Biden economy and a whole lot more. Remember, this show is proudly sponsored by LibertyNation.com, where you can access podcasts, breaking news, analysis, and a range of biting and brilliant shows to whet your appetite for freedom and your fondness for the great American constitution. With the death of Iranian President Raisi, a lit match has been thrown into the tinderbox of the Middle East. What does this mean? What's next for Iran? And what's next for the wider region? We're very fortunate to have with us national security correspondent, former U.S. Air Force pilot, former Principal Deputy Undersecretary of Defense Controller, Mr. Dave Patterson. How are you, Dave? Doing well, Mark. Happy to be with you. Now, Dave, this, um, with President Raisi dying in the helicopter crash, a lot of people are assuming that there's going to be some kind of power vacuum. Uh, but you wrote a, a rather fascinating piece about how you, you suspect it's going to be business as usual in, in terms of rep- replacing one hardline cleric with another in a recent article on LibertyNation.com. Care to fill us in on what you think is happening there? Yeah, I think you won't see much of a change. I mean, you're going to see quite a bit of uh, of energy being expended within Iran and, and a lot of posturing. But in the end, it's going to be uh, the Ayatollah Ali Khamenei who's going to make the, the decision, just like he made the decision during the uh, last election that uh, put uh, uh, Ibrahim Ra- Raisi in position. And... Uh, it's going to be pretty much the same. I think this is this is a a country that does not brook any sort of uh, turbulence in terms mm-hmm. of uh, the government. So um, I, I think it's going to be uh, a lot of uh, a lot of discussion, but not within Iran. Well, a lot of discussion on the pages of Western media about what reformers might be coming in and then of course we end up with meet the new boss same as the old boss now something that uh quite fascinated me is that racy was uh, unofficially pegged to become the next supreme leader uh but that was also a role that uh another name being floated was the uh uh ali khamenei khamenei's son was also a contender for that particular position. And it seems to me that, especially in this region, internal conflicts and palace intrigue are are the norm. And so why haven't we seen denouncements about uh, assassinations, which, I mean, it clearly looks like a helicopter crash. And we'll get into the the particulars of the helicopter soon enough, David. Um, But why are we not seeing those kind of recriminations, which we would expect almost as par for the course? I think it's because of the control that um, Khomeini has over the government and has over the populace. Uh, there, he just, as I said, he does not brook turbulence. And apparently, you know, as you as you watch what is uh, is said in Iran, uh, Raisi uh, pretty much parroted whatever uh, the uh, supreme leader said. And so uh, I think that basically what's going to happen here is that um the the next the next one in line could very uh easily be uh Khamenei's son but at the same time it's going to be whoever that Khamenei decides is going to be the heir apparent to uh the deceased president okay but let's let's talk about the 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 actual helicopter crash here because in this article you wrote, you really highlighted something that so few other outlets had covered. And I just found it a fascinating aside. I would have actually appreciated a much longer piece on this. But just to give a brief uh, summation here, they're essentially flying a helicopter that was older than me. That's correct. A Bell 212, it, uh, it was 
the part of the last uh, tranche of uh, Bell helicopters uh, that uh, were purchased prior to the uh, revolution in 1979. Uh, they've been kept flying lowly as many years as best they could. And it, it also shows a, an interesting set of priorities for uh, the Iranian government. <laughs> they spend billions on arms, but can't keep their helicopters flying. And not only that, but they've chosen not to buy relatively new helicopters from either China or Russia and kept these Bells uh, 212s going. And it, th these, are, these are Vietnam era uh, helicopters. And, uh, but uh, it, the civilian variant of, of the, the Huey, and it's just interesting that, that they would choose to attempt to keep these things flying. Not, not only that, it's not just that they're keeping these things flying, it's that they're using them to transport the president of the nation to, yeah. in, into weird mountainous regions near Azerbaijan. It's like, uh, it's like putting Joe Biden in an Edsel with three <laughs> wheels, which yeah. I'm sure he'd appreciate. But yeah. specifically to, the, to this helicopter, the Bell 212, uh, it's it's designed for, not for what they're doing, wasn't it? it? It's it's designed just where you have to rely on the pilot's vision rather than the the, the metrics and the sensors within. Yeah, that's correct. I mean, it's basically uh, visual flight rules only. I mean, it's not was what they bought was not designed to fly in weather. It's not uh, referred to as IFR uh, equipped. And um, uh, it's not even clear to me that uh, they had a, a, a more modern radar, uh, which would have, you know, given some indication that uh, the ground was coming up quickly. It's, fa it's fascinating that we, the, the Western world is dealing with uh, modern Iran, let's call it modern Iran, present day Iran. Uh, uh, and we're talking about well, they're, they're developing nuclear weapons. They've got nuclear facilities, and yet they're flying technology that's coming up to fifty years old. Uh, and they don't seem to have yeah. anybody to even do do proper maintenance on it. And that they blame that on sanctions for not sending in parts for a fifty-year-old machine. It, it does. It... I mean, it's sort of mind boggling when you think about it, but they still fly, you know, the F-14s uh, and they're, <laughs> they're, they're equally as old. Uh, it, it, it's just a, an interesting uh, study in, in what the Iranians consider to be important. And um, apparently flying their VIPs around safely is not one of those, those priorities. And it, yes. you know, it, and it may go back to, you know, Allah's will. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't want to is... put you on the spot mathematically, Dave, but those 300 plus ballistic missiles and drones that they sent at Israel uh, very recently, how many helicopters could they have bought for that money? Well, they could have bought more than one. I can tell you that. <laughs> that's all it takes, really. That, that's all that it really would have yeah, taken. Which is, is you know, uh, I, I think that probably they could have uh, redone their VIP fleet of three helicopters or four helicopters that they have, uh, certainly. But, um, you know, they didn't. And um, the, the, the problem uh, arose and Raisi uh, was the beneficiary. Well, there's a karmic lesson there, if ever I heard one. Dave Patterson will be right back with you after this short break. Don't go anywhere. We dismiss history at our peril. Liberty Nation Radio with Mark Angelides.